Well, welcome back. In this last part of the lecture, we're going to talk more about how to operationalize ecosystem service valuation and how to overcome some of the constraints that we've talked about. And to do this, we're going to use an example from Belize in Central America. Now, Belize is uh, a wonderful country. It has a population of about 300,000 people. It's quite a small country. It has a barrier reef system running along the length of its coast, which measures something like 300 kilometers. So it's a little jewel of the Caribbean, essentially. Now, one of the techniques that people are using in Belize to try to value ecosystem service in a, in a spatially explicit way is to use a tool known as INVEST. Now, INVEST is a program that's been developed between the University of Stanford by the World Wildlife Fund and the Nature Conservancy. And they've worked together with partners to come up with a series of, of tools or algorithms that can be used to try to value a surface spatially and map it. I'm just going to give you an example of one of these, which is recreation. Now, the first thing that you would do in developing a model of the service of recreation is gather some spatial information, because all of this for decision making needs to be spatially explicit and put into maps. So there's a number of different inputs that you would need to do that, some of which are very obvious. You'd like to know where the coral reefs are, where the mangroves are, and then some of the areas might be maybe not so intuitive, such as where oil and gas is occurring. So if you've got an area for oil and gas exploration, this is unlikely to be a place that people would seek out for their recreation. And by knowing where that area is, you know that this is not a place you would predict there to be lots of recreation. And some of them are very obvious, such as visitation. And so if we look at visitation as an example, there's a number of different ways that you can get a handle on how people are visiting different parts of the coastal zone. One of the more innovative solutions is to take photographs that people have posted online, look at the coordinates of where they were taken, and then from that derive an idea of where people are preferring to go and visit. Now, and take all of this information and you combine it into a, a simple model that allows you to essentially predict where people are going to undertake their recreation. Okay, so in order to um, finish that, you would estimate the number of visitors, you would look at how much those visitors are spending, and then that essentially gives you a value for the recreation at a particular location. Now, in order to incorporate this within an evaluation process, we need to think uh, about an appropriate strategy. And the way that this is done is we begin with some simple models. And I gave you just the example of recreation, but there are others that you'd use as well. And you'd input those values. But also you need to think about what are the scenarios for future development. So typically the way that you would do this is you would gather key informants. And these are people who really know what's going on in that country. And they sit down and they say, well, how might the future unfold? We have a variety of options. And decision makers always need to have options to pick from. And the question is, what are the consequences of each of those options? And so they might come up with a variety of different scenarios. And let's look at these. So one of them might be, uh, uh, a conservation scenario, for example. And the way that they would do this is you would gather current knowledge, you would work with these stakeholders and key informants to essentially come up with how might the future activities in Belize, certainly on the coast, develop under maybe a very conservation orientated strategy where we're really sort of um, prioritizing the good health of the ecosystem and we're sort of allowing less development. Alternatively, um, you might focus on development and allow development to run rife and say, well, if developers could do whatever they wanted, where might they develop first? And you might consider uh, an intermediate solution, which in this case was termed informed management, where you try to seek a compromise. You want a bit of everything. Okay. So you imagine what these different scenarios would look like and you create maps of how those would unfold. Where would people undertake certain activities? Where would aquaculture be located? Where would tourism be focused under these different sorts of development scenarios? Then the challenge is to relate these to your, your models and predict what that would mean for future ecosystem services. And here's an example. Here we've looked at the recreations. This is the map of Belize. Those hexagons are individual cells. The, not the 
the depth of the green colour gives you an indication of the amount of future recreational value that would occur by the year, say, 2025, assuming that we had followed one of those development scenarios. This is, in fact, is our intermediate one. And what you then do is try and estimate for different regions of the country how that's going to affect the future values. And so here we might look at the current value, which is in yellow, and you might compare that to the informed management scenario. And so here you can see for a number of different regions of Belize that by choosing the informed scenario, we see about a threefold benefit over what is currently the case, what is currently being delivered in terms of ecosystem services. Okay. So you might start off by saying, if we look at the current time, 2010 or whatever it's going to be, how much habitat do we have of each of those ecosystems and what are the current service values of the major, um, major ecosystem services that we're concerned with? And that might include lobster fisheries, in this case, recreation and coastal protection. We then might want to say, and how are they going to unfold in future? And so, again, we then bring these maps of these future scenarios to bear and ask ourselves, which of these future scenarios has the greatest benefit to the people of Belize in this case. And what you're seeing here is a comparison between the sort of current values and again the informed management values. And in fact, these are often greatest in the informed management values across all of these services. So inarguably, the, the best development scenario of the three that were put on the table is the one that was a compromise between the two. Now, this approach isn't perfect. What it's essentially doing is taking the best available science, trying to synthesize that to create models that help us predict if you have some kind of development or future activity, how will the benefits that people derive from the ocean be distributed and how much will those benefits be? And of course, over time, as the science improves and we understand more about how people value systems and how the ecosystems themselves work, we'll get better at doing this. And that makes this a very exciting and important area of research.